how good is trabectome? How good, how good is this? How does it compare to, to traps or to tube shunts? Is it only for early glaucomas? It isn't, not in my hand. I haven't, done, I haven't done any trabeculectomies for three years and a half now, and I only do occasionally tube shunts, and I don't get a special breed of patients, and I will show you my own results in a second, but this here is trabectome after failed trabeculectomy. Phaco trabectome after a failed trabeculectomy doesn't look so bad, you know, in patients who suffered through mitomycin, 5-FU injections, laser suture lysis, you still get a relatively good drop from 20 to uh, 15 and something. You still get a medication reduction out of this. Trabectome only in pseudophagic patients, these had a different indication. You always have to be careful with minimally invasive glaucoma surgery. Trabectum only probably means this patient has serious glaucoma and your pressure is the primary indication and motivation to try to lower pressure. So that's the reason for the higher baseline here. So from 24 to again 15 and something, similar results. Again stuck at this magic sound barrier that we're facing in in uh, glaucoma surgery, you know, tube shunts, traps, supracordial shunts, they're all ending up around 15, unless you do something more. Global outcomes. So this is not after failed trabeculectomy. These are primary procedures, very similar. 20 to 15, this is uh, 36 months, 1,400 patients. Trabectum only, 25, again, different indication, higher pressures, and close to that goal while reducing medication. These are my own, so when I, when I knew I was leaving Yale, I figured, you know what, now, let's, why not try trabectum on everyone? I had 200 patients. Um, I did not do any traps at that time. I had three half days of a clinic, so everyone who was coming to me was getting trabectomes, literally everyone, except, except uh, active neovascularization. You don't want to have NVA in active, um, in active neovascular glaucoma and active uveitis, but everyone else, and they made for about almost 30% of my patients were secondary cases, acute angle closures, dry neovascular glaucoma, secondary traps and tubes, and overall I get a pressure drop about 30% uh, in pseudoexfoliation. <laughs> you know, if your pathology is the mesh work, you're golden. You get huge pressure drops. Pseudoexfoliation, pigment dispersion, um, steroid-induced glaucoma, I, I don't see why anyone would not do a meshwork-based procedure in those patients. Um, and so pre-op our pressure was 20. We dropped them to 14.5. We still eliminated, in average, one eye drop. And only four patients at one year had to be advanced to other surgeries. Um, and I was involved in the gold shunt, so that's what uh, many of these patients got. OK, here's the dot plot. You can see um, that most of my patients dropped. Others didn't. <laughs> And now you want to know, okay, but my patient has a pressure goal of 12. How many patients um, actually achieve the pressure of 12? That's a very low pressure. Can you get that low with trabectome? Well, in pseudoexfoliation, 50% of our patients had that pressure. That's pretty low. Actually, the um, omelet glaucoma pressures were identical to this pressure. So 50% of my patients I showed you was the average, and that's, where, that, that's what this graph shows. 81% uh, had a pressure lower than 18. So it depends what your goal is. But clearly, the biggest blessing is, even if your patient is in the 20% and who you did not achieve your goal, you're not causing flat chambers, endophthalmitis, explosive hemorrhages. And, and, and these numbers are very high for tube shunts, and we all know, yes, it wasn't always devastating, but these were problems that required interventions in the TVT study. And, and with our mix, minimally invasive glaucoma surgeries, trabectome, a little pressure elevation in 3 to 10% temporarily, or 2% with the eye stand, I think this is fabulous. If you were, why would you not give an eye a chance to have a lower pressure that seems to be equal in this non-randomized trial that we did, equal to a tube shunt, for instance? Why not trying that first? How does it work with pseudoexfoliation? It works well. These are global data. This is not just my data. It's a mature technique. It's been around for eight, eight years now. It works in uveitic glaucoma. 
These are 69 patients here. Steroid-induced glaucoma, dramatic drop, 49 patients. Does it work in children? We think it does. In fact, we're now doing it at our children's hospital. We're trying this because it's, it's an easy surgery. Uh, and removing these wound lips is, is, uh, is elegant. We want to compare this to a goniotomy. Um, do you have any questions? <laughs>